Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Let's talk about this markets because mm-hmm. things have been going crazy. We talk about an S&P and a NASDAQ right now around session lows. I was looking at the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index down 7% on the day. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty brutal out there. It's not just chips, it's also some of the AI plays. We were speaking earlier about some of those AI darlings getting hit with some short reports. So uh, investors coming out and saying, I'm short the stock and this is why. And that has Lumen, for example, has gotten hit mm-hmm. uh, in part of that. Yeah, absolutely. And it raises the question, you know, Super Micro, Symbiotic, a lot of these other names here. I don't know, is this just a symptom of the fact that these were the high flyers so hey if you made a lot of money off them and you're feeling skittish Mm -hmm. why not just cash out or is this more symptomatic of people rethinking that whole AI trade or the idea of say super micro is that now it's not in the small caps it's in the S&P so does that change who covers it and how they look at it and that changes how you view the numbers but either way you're laughing at me I'm laughing laughing because someday we have to talk about why super micro is even in the S&P 500 that's a whole nother topic I don't want to derail things right right but that's also why (laughs) the analysts can now look at it in a different way and then you have different analysts uh, covering that stock and that winds up hurting. It does raise the question in terms of the AI trade. What is cyclical? What is structural? And then how do you invest in that? Sam Palmasano, chairman of the Center for Global Enterprise and former CEO over at IBM, joins us. Now, Sam, it's really good to get your perspective. We very much appreciate this. How do you, how does someone who's been in the technology industry for decades and understands innovation and understands a business cycle, what is AI right now? Well, that's a great question, Alex, and it remains good being with you guys again. It's always a pleasure to be with you, especially on a beautiful afternoon. It's great to be in my office, not outside playing golf or something, but uh, on a more serious note. (laughs) Now, I I think that the best way to think about this, and I can draw parallels to the Internet if you like, but when they're still in the early stages of AI, and if you go back to the early days of the Internet, what happens is phases. It begins with the enablers, and that would have been back then Netscape, Sun, Cisco, and AT&T. Today, you would put the enablers as the micro. Microsoft, NVIDIA's, AMD, Anthropics, the chip guys, et cetera, uh, the foundational model guys. Uh, and then it moves to the adopters over time, but that's time. And that, if they go back to the internet, that would have been Meta, Amazon, DoorDash, Netflix. And then it, the next phase would have been people, people that applied innovation to the technology, and that would be the Ubers, the Netflix, uh, the Airbnbs, et cetera, et cetera, and DoorDash. You know? So that's the phases of this thing. Mm-hmm. And so far, it's repeating itself. And, and we are in the early phase. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So the enablers are going to continue to, my opinion anyway, do well. Now, I mean, you guys know markets. I can't speak the valuations of what sure. happens day to day. Uh, but I, long-term trends, I've seen this thing. I saw it in the early days of clients. So I've been at this industry for like 50 years. So this isn't my first time to kind of view these transitions. So Sam, is the real boost in efficiency going to come from Romain and I using it on our phones? Or is it going to come from like entirely new business lines and rethinking the way we fund fundamentally do things. Alex, I tell you, now that's a very interesting insight because if you look at what's going to happen short term, if I quote of Kinsey estimates of this sort of thing, they value the Gen AI that's going to be adopted in the early stages of it in four key areas. That's customer operations, marketing and sales, software engineering and R&D, i.e. productivity in the world. So they're saying the first phase will be productivity. That also could be productivity to the user on the phone, by the way, as far as their user experience, booking reservations or whatever it happens to be. It could be simplified by the application of AI, but in the enterprise itself, it's going to be more around productivity. Now, having said that, the real innovation comes, real value creation comes in the next phase. And I go back to my analogy of the internet, that's what I mentioned earlier, Uber, Airbnb, Spotify, Netflix. That is the next phase yeah. uh, where this thing's going to take off. So, so- but, Go ahead, yes. So you're seeing a lot of parallels. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, but I want you to kind of expand on that because, I mean, your experience is relatively unique. I mean, you came of age, at least in your career, at IBM at a time uh, when corporate computing was really taking off, then personal computing, you were still there uh, when the sort of the Internet age came about. And now you're not with IBM anymore, but you're still around here investing in what a lot of people think is going to be that next big new technology. I don't think anyone is doubting that this might be the next big thing. I think people are kind of doubting who the winners and losers are going to be. And right now, all the bets seem to be with such a small cohort of companies. Well, that's, I mean, that's exactly right. And that's how it was go back to the Internet. It's a small core that benefited initially, and then it broadened out. And it broadened out when it got to the adoption phase, not the enabling. I mean, the infrastructure build-out. 
That's why these guys are sold out, because everybody's chasing the infrastructure build-out, i.e. the hyperscalers, and they're ordering GPUs and chips like crazy, because they want to be ahead of the curve as this adoption phase or demand increases on the cloud providers, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Azure, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of where we are in the phase. I really do think that the hard thing to predict, I mean, go back in time, even in the early days of the internet when companies were digitizing, did people think it would be impacting how you take a ride in a car, i.e. Uber, or, or get a room someplace, or get videos, media to place, and all that sort of stuff, or music. Nobody really conceived in the early days of the internet. It was more about digitizing things and putting your information up on the web, and maybe doing a little bit of commerce. Yeah. Did anybody think that little bit of commerce would be Amazon? Yeah. So my, the point is now, that, I mean, to your point, is predicting where it will go, I tell you, that's really hard. I mean, I'm an investor in this space, and uh, you know, we're focused primarily in areas around healthcare and around cyber and those sorts of things. And, and you're, seeing, you're seeing the substantive use or potential use of this technology? Because even when you go back to the internet age, and I know there was a lot of hype and a lot of folks who were predicting things that never panned out, but I think for a lot of us, at least the laymen out there, you, know, you can actually see the tangible qualities of what they at least were trying to build. AI just seems a lot more ephemeral. Well, I mean, there's a couple of things. First of all, let's take about the um, let's talk about the enterprise adoption rate, where can great value can be created in these enterprise companies, and guys running this companies realize they've done the pilots, they've experimented, they've done these things, and they're going to chase productivity in the short term, but they're going to drive innovation in the long term. And that's to the innovation in the enterprise, there are still limitations in the technology. I mean, for example, accuracy and transparency and validity. If you're doing financial services or you're doing uh, national security or you're doing healthcare and you're worrying about people that are going to live or die, you need those issues to be addressed. And they will be addressed. And there are a lot of startups trying to address a lot of those and those areas of inadequacy that exist today. So therefore, you see things being applied to what I call the simpler use case, like marketing, like customer service, et cetera, et cetera. I do believe that now this, these cycles, as I go back to the internet, they're like 10 to 15 year cycles, uh -huh. you know, right? So, I mean, we're in the year, what, three maybe, depending upon how you count this stuff. So, I mean, we have a long way to go. Uh, and from an investor, I mean, I'm basically a VC today. I'm not involved in large companies. I'm, I mean, an advisor, but I'm not really involved day to day. Uh, fundamentally, from a VC perspective, we're making bets in those industries mm -hmm. where the technology could have a massive impact. For example, the delivery of healthcare or therapeutics and those sorts of things. Massive impact to improve the system, to drive productivity, to improve outcomes. Uh, that could be significant. Financial services. There's a lot of things that can be done in financial services, again, to improve prove uh, the value to society and the value to the companies themselves. All right, Sam, I have to leave it there. Great insights, as always. Have a wonderful day. Sam Palmasano, he's the chairman of the Center for Global Enterprise, as he said, a VC funder in the AI space, and of course, a longtime IBM employee who rose to the top of the mountain there.